Well, all I can say is that God must have a really good sense of humour. This is the third time in the last few weeks that I've been asked to preach or reflect on the gospel account of the feeding of the 5,000. So I have had cause to read and reread the story, both in Matthew's gospel and in John. And for that, I am grateful. But where to start? At the feeding of the 5,000, we are shown Jesus taking the offering of a packed lunch of five loaves and two fish and satisfying the needs of a hungry crowd with 12 full baskets of breadcrumbs left over. Just as a catering operation, it is seriously impressive. But look deeper at what went on. Between the presentation of the five loaves and two fish and the collection of the baskets full of leftovers, what did Jesus do? Well, Matthew tells us that he took the gifts of food, looked up to heaven in prayer, blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to distribute. This is a beautiful sign revealing much about the identity of Jesus. It speaks to us of the generosity of God. The hunger of the people was satisfied, all ate and were filled. And just as at the wedding in Cana, there was a ridiculous excess of finest wine, so here there is a ridiculous excess of bread. But this miraculous feeding of the crowd is also pointing to the Eucharist. I don't know about you, but I missed Holy Communion so much during lockdown. I could watch with envy on my computer screen as colleagues presided in their homes or churches. I could prayerfully make my spiritual communion. I was greatly comforted by the fact that every day in my archdeaconry and across the diocese, one of our priests would be saying Mass. But I longed and I hungered to physically receive the sacrament. And I know that many of you are still in that place of waiting and longing. And I recognise it won't be quite the same without him singing and in one kind only and without coffee and biscuits afterwards. But nowhere else do we receive Christ in that deeply satisfying way. Nothing else sends us out filled with that same sense of God's presence and hope and purpose and peace. For just like in our gospel, Jesus stands between the offering of the gifts and the clearing up afterwards and something amazing happens. Yes, it is a sign, but God is also at work within it and somehow heaven and earth touch as we join with the church throughout the world and throughout the ages to obey Jesus' command at the Last Supper that we should meet together and do this in remembrance of him. And just like that crowd in our gospel reading for Sunday, our hunger is satisfied. Look again at the story. None of the 5,000 men, the women or the children were left wanting. Instead, their stomachs were full of food. And if you also look at the account in John's Gospel, you will see that although they didn't fully understand, their hearts were full too of hope. And of course, the provision was overflowing. This is what happens when we receive from Jesus. When we receive Jesus. I have loved seeing the creativity of our churches over the last few months, And I really hope and pray that some of that will continue as we seek to nurture people in their faith in new ways and to serve our communities. But nothing can fully replace the experience of receiving communion. So thank you for all you are doing to help make churches safe and to manage the risks associated with public worship. 
We in the crowd are hungry and Jesus sees that and longs to feed us. Now let me pray for you. Christ, who has nourished us with himself, the living bread, make you one in praise and love and raise you up at the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.